Selangor, Malaysia. Surrounding Kuala Lumpur, it is the most wealthiest and populous state. Often unheard of and overlooked by tourists, it definitely has some epic places to discover on a weekend. What got the attention of the British and the Dutch towards this place? Let's find out, starting from the former capital of the Sultanate, with the same name, Kuala Selangor. Or, to be precise, of its shore, in the middle of nowhere. Wow, it's much more crowded than I expected. It's like hundreds of people up there. We are literally in the middle of the sea, in the middle of Melaka Strait, 12 kilometers of the shore of Selangor. I cannot even see any land, 360 degrees. Like, this is the Selangor and this is me. And this is Kuala Lumpur over here. Just literally right between Sumatra and Peninsula Malaysia. Very cool experience. Because literally no land all around and so many people. Sumatra is around 100 kilometers across the Melaka Strait this way. So we are still kind of in the center of Melaka Strait. Awesome. Before Sky Mirror was discovered only in 2016, just eight years ago, it was the best kept secret only known to the local fishermen. The strip of sand emerges 18 days a month during a low tide. And now those same fishermen have traded their fishing nets for cameras to earn money from this army of tourists. All those white walls are actually uh, photographers. They clean the sand to make a nice, a perfect shot with the reflection to create this kind of infinity effect. They're all along the beach, like dozen of them. For 120 ringgit for this entire two-hour trip, you will also get an infinite number of cool photos. Wow, it's gonna rain. Everyone is leaving now. So it's gonna be a traffic jam on the water. Even photographers are leaving, so it's gonna be a storm or something. So we have visited this coolest place in Malaysia just on time. Let's get back to Kuala Selangor and start exploring the town with local seafood before we end up at the bottom of the ocean and become seafood ourselves. In the most local area of Kuala Selangor, I'm gonna try the most local Kuala Selangor seafood. This is the best way to immerse into the local culture by eating the local food. I'm sure it's, it's very, very good. Lunch overlooking Selangor River. So basically Kuala Selangor is named after Selangor River. It splits the town into two portions. So across the river is a downtown and this communication tower is actually Malavati Hill. And this side of the town is kind of rural. And down there is the only bridge connecting these two sides of the town. And it's just one hour drive northwest from Kuala Lumpur and nature is so pristine here. It's so peaceful, so calm. It's kind of fishing village. Even the poster of some establishment in this area 100 years century fishing village. So you got some history over here. I'm not great at reviewing food, but trust me, it's so good and fresh here. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many Singaporeans flocking here. Now, let's cross that only bridge across the river and get to the top of that hill by tram. Do they have trams here? To get to the top of Melavati Hill, you can walk for 20 minutes or you can take a tram for 10 ringgit per person. And this is how train looks like. It's just a tractor right off the field. Like literally, they took it from the field. Very cool. The tram is on the tracks only on weekends and public yeah. holidays, as you can drive up the hill on weekdays. Okay, it took only five minutes by tram up the hill. And there are a lot of monkeys already, I can see. They want my ice cream. They are not aggressive at all. First time in Southeast Asia and South Asia, I see such non-aggressive monkeys. Long-tailed macacas. Awesome. And I'm on the top of Bukit Malavatia. This is actually just 54 meters high hill and it's 
built by Malays in 16th century, more than 500 years ago. And in 1778, it was fortified against the Dutch invasion. But still, after six years, Dutch invaded and captured this hill. And just one year later, Sultan Ibrahim, he captured it back. And what a beautiful lighthouse. It was built by Dutch in 1794. And 110 years later, it was renovated by British. It projects the beam, which is visible 56 kilometers away. So until the middle of Malacca Strait, probably. Uh, this hill, lighthouse, they witnessed a lot. Dutch, British, Malay, only Portuguese they haven't seen. There's also a small museum with historical artifacts showcasing Kuala Silangor's early settlement, fishing culture and trading history. What I've learned here is that the museum closes for lunch at 1 and I got kicked out of it after spending only like 5 minutes inside. Interesting museum about local history. And did you know that Kuala Silangor nickname is beautiful and historic and it makes sense in terms of historic and how beautiful it is and Kuala Selangor was actually a capital of Sultanate of Selangor uh, during its early years in the 18th century before it moved to Klang in 1870s capital with a population of under 3000 people a small town with a big history let's rent a bike and cycle around there are plenty of hipster places here The tram has arrived. But first, let's check in the hotel right above Selangor River. Brand new hotel Lo Shore. Very good location on the east side. Simple windowless room. Very good deal. Everything you need is here. And the highlight of this hotel is the balcony. From up here you can see how wide the Selangor river is, it's like 100 meters wide, spectacular. I see the demographics, they're almost 50-50% Malay and Chinese population. And this side of the river is apparently dominant by Chinese population. And there are also a lot of Buddhist temples like this temple on the left and monkey temple on the right. And mosques I've seen on the opposite side of the river. So it's quite interesting how they spread it out over here. There's basically no infrastructure if you want to go from one side to another side of Kuala Selangor. There's no grab, there's no like pedestrian infrastructure or cycling infrastructure. But it's very interesting to see difference between these two sides of Kuala Selangor. They're completely different. So worth to hustle a bit to go to another side. Wow, I'm roaming around Kuala Selangor town and I found colonial British building and I can see the letters 1930 so it's probably built by British back then and there is a nice cafe down there let's have a coffee The British presence here began in 1847, focusing on tin mining and rubber plantations. The river and the Milaga Strait provided a strategic location for transporting and exporting these commodities. The British used Kuala Selangor as an administrative and military base, impacting the region's economic and political development. Oh, it's so good. In this colonial 1930 building, very aesthetic cafe with a view over the town, wonderful. There are just endless murals all around the town. And I noticed many, many towns in Malaysia, they have this kind of culture to paint everything in these murals. Not graffiti, but murals dedicated to this particular region. And you see, this is a maritime ones. This is some agricultural ones. And it's very interesting way to introduce the place to the tourists and what it is famous for. And yeah, the tiles, they're in the colors of Silangor flag. See, Kuala Silangor town has its own design code on the street signs. The everywhere place Miravati Lighthouse, which is a signature landmark of this town. The town is so small, everything is squeezed at a, like two blocks by two blocks area. It's very cozy actually. And another cafe in another colonial house. I don't know if it's like British or Dutch, but I like that there are a lot of cafes in the city center where you can just have some coffee and relax outdoors. And then we get for ice cold latte. 
with a nice view at the town center of Kuala Selangor. I like this town for its vibe and how peaceful it is. The sidewalks end on the bridge and there is no infrastructure for cycling anymore. So I had to climb over my bicycle over there and continue along the river. So if you plan to stay in Kuala Selangor overnight, you better stay on the western side of Selangor River since on the eastern side there's nothing. Look, it's just jungle and some locals living, some hotels and a couple of temples. That's it. All the action is on the western side of Selangor River. And it's quite difficult to commute from east to west if you don't have your own car. So be prepared in advance. I'm back at the jetty as there's still two activities on the river worth exploring. Eagle feeding and firefly watching. And that's where you might feel scammed. Another local activity is eagle feeding. Honestly, I don't remember I saw eagles in the wild in Malaysia, but it's very popular especially in Langkawi. So I go deep into the jungle to find them and feed. Sounds cool. I've experienced that before. Do you also have the impression that eagle feeding should look like this? I see, so they drop the food into the water to attract eagles and then we just do eagle watching, not eagle feeding. Uh, there's another boat of tourists came, they will drop more food to attract more birds. Anyway, even though I didn't get to touch them, I've never seen so many eagles up close before. Let's come back after it gets dark. And after dinner and after it gets dark, what you do in Selangor? Yes, you go see fireflies. Fireflies is a big business here, big industry. It started in 1970s over here, more than 50 years ago. Let's go and see what's so interesting about them. And you still again need to take uh, the same boat. Thank you. A few decades ago, firefly watching here began as research by local and international scientists. By 1989, the government, recognizing its economic value, began to support and promote firefly tourism. Yeah, I can see fireflies, but my camera cannot. But they're blinking like little stars inside the jungle. Okay, let's get back and enjoy them without camera, with our own eyes. Good rainy morning! It's time to leave Kuala Selangor and go up north to Sekinchan to see its rice fields and see what else we can find there to explore. Sekinchan is another small coastal town of Selangor, but without colonial architecture, expensive rivers and hipster cafes. It is the rice bowl of Malaysia, but more of that later. For now, I wish you could see this. Just 40 minutes drive up north, arrive to Sikinchan, a small town of 25,000 people and the main attraction here is a wishing tree. So apparently you need to write your name here on a red ribbon and hang it over there so I can wish this video will get at least 200 views. Aha, so how it works, you need to donate some money over here, then take a ribbon and write your wishes on the ribbon and hang on a tree down there. One, two, three. Oh! It's not that easy because it's quite far. I will do it again from down there. It's fun. Okay, that's, that's not that easy actually. But I will try. I did it. Woo! Very high. Wishing tree. Thank you. So, hope this video will get 200 views. And just opposite to a wishing tree is a Pantai Redang. Very pleasant family beach, very quiet, with a lot of seashells everywhere. Any size, they just embedded on the ground. But now it's a low tide, so I cannot see much and appreciate the water and how nice this beach is. And this is probably the only beach in Sikinchan, actually. And so cool, this beach has two tree houses. For kids or maybe for adults, I'm not sure, but quite cool concept. And a family park and perfect hangout spot on Sunday. They literally brought two benches up there so people can hang out. Wow, there's even more tree houses. This is definitely for kids one with a slide. And another one also seems like for kids as well. Very, very cozy. I would like to have some work done up there. Very peaceful environment and some shops just beside. 
Sekichan is a fishing village, and freshly caught seafood stalls replace restaurants here. You can feel it's fresh. Mm. Very, very fresh. But what really makes Sekinchan special is rice. Sekinchan from Chinese means suitable for planting. And no wonder, this is the leading producer of the rice in the entire Malaysia. This endless field saves the entire Malaysia from starvation, as it has the highest rice production in the country. There is even a small factory hidden somewhere in the fields, where you can learn about rice and processing methods. Exporting rice! right from the factory this is actually a weight to weight a truck full of rice like this is the amount how heavy it is it's zero now i'm stepping on it it increases and i'm 70 kg so basically this building is a gallery with interactive things and also they make a rice here and export in these cars they weight them there and expert you can buy rice here you can see different installations learn about it so all about this huge industry in selangor in sekichan wow i can see the rice bags over there as well ready to go all around the world the most popular rice variety here is pearl rice which everyone buys here as a souvenir seems like tourism in selangor starts booming otherwise how would you explain a freaking 7 to 7 in the middle of the fields Yes, it is real and will soon be converted into a premium cafe called The Terminal. Very interesting, the streets between Pedi Fields have their own names like Lorong Four, and it's a part of Sikinchan town. So this Pedi Fields is basically a huge neighborhood with their own streets, their own names and like their own shops just in between these Pedi Fields. This is, place is unique. Mango is actually my favorite fruit and they sell different mangoes here. They make smoothie, juice, blend it with ice. It's worth to try some local mangoes. Mm, very thick, strong taste of mango. Very juicy, highly recommend it. And this Lorong 4, surrounded by paddy fields, has just normal landed houses belonging to just normal Malaysians. They're living here, right in the middle of it. Wow, look at this. Just normal landed property with the cars. How cool is this? Yeah, this is Sekin Chan, live inside Paddy Fields. While Selangor may not be the top destination choice for tourists, it's rapidly been developed for a future much brighter than its fireflies. It's time to head back home after a short weekend filled with long lasting memories.